Well, hey everyone, Josh Davis here for another uh, Lightroom tutorial, and uh, the photo that I'm going to retouch today is of the Nubble Lighthouse in uh, York, Maine. I took this, I don't know, maybe about a month or two ago, and uh, the afternoon that uh, Sarah and I went up there, it uh, it got kind of kind of crappy towards the evening around sunset, but I was hoping to get some really good sunset pictures. Uh, the sky was pretty overcast, and uh, there wasn't too much light peeking through the clouds. So uh, let's just kind of see what we can do with Lightroom here to sort of recover this photo. And uh, you'll see that just after a, a few small uh, tweaks here in the uh, development panel, uh, we can really make this picture uh, a lot better than it looks now and definitely worthy of hanging uh, up on our wall. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is do a crop because uh, I'm noticing this little telephone pole sticking out of the ground here, and that, that doesn't look too good. So I just press the crop tool up here and uh... oops go away I'm just gonna click and drag up from the bottom corner here just so that pole is out of view and then just hit enter so that's taken care of the next thing I'm gonna do is take a, a, a gradient tool here and you see it's already set down to minus point eight uh... of a stop and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just draw a straight line down holding on the shift key just allows you to keep it uh, in a straight line and then you can release the mouse button and then once you've uh, set this gradient you can double click on the dot here and just move it around um, till what you uh, till what you like uh, best and actually what I'm going to do is bring up the saturation a little bit to bring back the saturation in that top half of the gradient as well as uh, the clarity just to give a little bit more punch to the clouds I'll even bring the contrast up a little bit too That's pretty much it there on the gradient. Next, I'm going to bring up the blacks just a little bit, kind of bring bring some contrast and some color back into the into the ground and the rocks down here, it's starting to get uh, look a little washed out. Next, I'll bring up the clarity slider, and clarity just kind of adds just a little extra punch uh, to the photo. You can kind of see a before and after here. Some some photos can take more clarity than than others. Uh, usually, landscape shots sometimes you can really crank it uh, before you start to notice the effects, and it just kind of brings out the details. Uh, and it's almost it's almost like sharpening, but it, it's more of like a punch. As you can see uh, before and then after. So it's more of like a just kind of a, a a grittiness punch to things. I tend to keep it up around 50 when I'm doing landscapes. Vibrance on a landscape, you can really crank that high, and that that really uh, changes things up. You know, before we had a pretty washed out, uh, kind of you know dull photo, but you really crank the vibrance up, and it really brings out the colors. And you'll find when you have people in the picture too, it it uh, it really doesn't mess up the skin tones too much at all. Actually, it it looks it looks pretty nice. So you can really go nuts with the with the vibrance uh, setting here. You can see it before. And after what the vibrance does, it's pretty um, pretty crazy how how good it it, uh, it can make a photo look on a on a kind of overcast uh, gross day. So we have our vibrance adjusted. I might adjust my tone curve a little bit. You can see when I move the mouse here, you see that little dot move along the line, and I can move it to a point, and then use the up or down arrows on the keyboard to adjust the curve. I'm just going to make an S curve. So what I'm going to do is hit up a couple times, and then down here I'm going to hit down a couple times and uh, doing it uh, an S curve on the tone curve uh, just brings out a little bit more contrast in the photo so that's done I'm not gonna mess too much with the colors here in the detail panel I am gonna adjust the sharpening a little bit um, I, I find on a landscape you can you can go a little bit higher on the sharpening than you can with uh, people but I'll, you know, I'll just drag it up to sort of like seasoning to taste you know whatever looks good you don't want to go too high in some pictures because it can really bring out some noise uh, in the photo and by noise I mean that film grain type look when you have high I, uh, ISO so uh, let's see we'll bring it up to about maybe halfway here and you can see a uh, before and after Little sharpening, you can really notice it in the uh, uh, the lighthouse there up in the the top 
part of the lighthouse and in the windows. See an after there. The sharpening really helps. Uh, vignette. I'll probably finish off with uh, just a little bit of vignette here. Whoop! Way too much. Way too much. Wiping that around here. Bring the midpoint in a little bit. Increase the roundness. Let's touch. And I'll bring the feather up a little bit more, just to sort of blend it in. I wonder what contrast does. I haven't really played with that. I don't think it does too, too much. But that's probably what I'll do for a, a vignette. Nor normally, I will use the lens correction vignetting because I like it better. But since I've cropped my image, uh, you have to use the post crop because the, uh, the actual lens correction applies to your entire image and won't apply to a uh, cropped photo, which I think is kind of lame because I really like the effect that the lens, uh, the lens correction does over the post crop vignette. But um, yeah, that's about it. I think this photo looks pretty good. And just to give you uh, a little taste of what it was like before, I'll just go down to the strip here and we'll create a virtual copy. And then I'll just go down and press reset on that virtual copy. So there's our before photo. And here's our after. We've come a long way. And I, I think I'm definitely going to print this one out because it's, nice, it's a nice shot. And, and you know, you'd be surprised that it was taken on that day if you were actually there because... Uh, the sky was was pretty dull, and uh, there wasn't too much sun coming through the clouds. Um, but you know, Lightroom can really save a photo, and especially if you shoot raw, uh, you have a lot more flexibility when it comes to editing your image. Um, this photo was taken with my Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter at uh, 52 millimeters at f4, one eight hundredth of a second. Um, Josh Davis, thanks for stopping by and uh, checking out my tutorial. Hopefully, I'll. Uh, have some more posted soon. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. And uh, thanks again. See you later.